Hi guys, so Kate Hoey, Baroness Kate Hoey, is a Brexiteer and a Unionist. She lives in Northern Ireland and she's extremely concerned about the Northern Ireland Protocol. Now you can see here her campaigning for Brexit with a good friend of hers, Nigel Farage, on the Thames um, some years ago. Now I want to show you this interview with uh, Kate today um, and she's complaining about, as I said, the Northern Ireland Protocol. So let's hear what she had to say. Well, I think there's two important aspects to it. First, as the c committee will be hearing today from traders uh, who and hauliers who are finding it incredibly difficult to get trade and uh, food and all sorts of products moved from one part of the United Kingdom to another. Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom. And because of the protocol, uh, Northern Ireland has been left in the single market for goods, which means that all the regulations of the EU are applying there uh, as if it was going over to uh, mainland EU. And other yeah, yeah, that's true. She's uh, completely correct here. Northern Ireland is basically part of the single market in the customs union. That means the goods that are moving from Great Britain, which is a third country, into Northern Ireland have to be checked. And it's unfortunate, but that's the reality. Now, people, you know, Kate and other Brexiteers and unionists want to cancel all of this. They want to, you know, go back to something different. They want to cancel the Good Friday, uh, sorry, the Northern Ireland Protocol and replace it with nothing. Now, Kate is also advocating for a border in the Irish, on the island of Ireland, not in the Irish Sea. Now, I, I'm not going to go over old ground again, but I just want to give a quick summary. When Brexit happened, both the Irish government and the European Union said Northern Ireland is going to be an issue. Brexit here said stop scaremongering, Northern Ireland will not be an issue. And for a long time, Northern Ireland was put on the back burner. Of course, towards the end of the, um, the, uh, the agreement, uh, the withdrawal agreement, the period of the uh, transition, Northern Ireland started to become an issue again. And of course, since Northern Ireland is part of the Single Market and the Customs Union, since January, it's creating problems. Now, as I said, no, the European Union and the Irish government said it was a, they were concerned about Northern Ireland. So the European Union put forward a, a, a position. They said, look, why don't we do this? And it was to keep the UK, Great Britain and Northern Ireland within the Customs Union and Single Market then no borders would be necessary. But Kate and her good friend Nigel and Boris Johnson and Jacob Rees-Mogg said, no, we don't want that. We want, and, and the DUP, I should add, we don't want that. We want the UK, Great Britain and Northern Ireland to be outside the single market and the customs union. So we, we would prefer to have a border. So then, of course, it fell down to, okay, do you want the border um, on the island of Ireland, or do you want the border in the Irish Sea? If you have it in the island of Ireland, of course, it runs into conflict with the Good Friday Agreement, which I've talked about before. Having border checks is against the um, spirit of the Good Friday Agreement on the island of Ireland because there are so many crossings. It would just stop the flow of the freedom of people north and south to move freely um, because goods have to be stopped. But in order to stop goods, you need physical points and that would be against the spirit. There are already ports in Northern Ireland to check, well, that can be modified to check goods coming from Scotland or coming from England or coming from Wales. That's not a big issue. It is for people like uh, Kate, it is a big issue for some unionists. But th the options were always a border on the island of Ireland or a border in the Irish Sea. Now she's going to talk about, of course, this is slowing down trade, this is bad for trade, but a border on the island of Ireland would also reduce trade. So her argument is we need to get rid of it because it, it would free up trade. But you would, if you put the border somewhere else, you're just going to slow down trade in a different way. In other words, Northern Ireland is still part of the customs union, part of the customs part and part of the single market. And this has meant that there's huge delays, but also really ridiculous little things like, for example, many people are finding it difficult to get deliveries made from Amazon, for example. Quite often it comes up, the address comes up as BT and it simply says not delivering to Northern Ireland. If we, if we take a pet from Great Britain to Northern Ireland now. I don't actually know what she's talking about. Is it 
deliveries from the European Union aren't going into Northern Ireland or deliveries from Great Britain aren't going into Northern Ireland. She said GT, BT, I'm not sure what she means by that. But if that's the case, there may there are some issues that need to be resolved. But there are other issues that will not be resolved because the UK, sorry, Great Britain is a third country. Are we going to have to get a rabies in the health injection? Now, this is going from one part of the UK to another. I understand the frustration. But she voted for this. She campaigned for this. People said on numerous occasions, if you... If Northern Ireland, if you want to leave the single market and the customs union, it's going to create problems. And people like Kate Hoey said, stop scaremongering. These people put their trust in Boris Johnson because Boris Johnson said he would never put a border down the Irish Sea. No unionist, no conservative and unionist prime minister would ever put the border down the Irish Sea. Look, can I give some advice? to anyone, anyone living in the UK, be it Britain, Great Britain or Northern Ireland, when Boris Johnson says something, think the opposite. If Boris Johnson says he's going to help you, he's not going to help you. If Boris Johnson says he's going to put a border on the island of Ireland, he's going to put it somewhere else. I think it's a good rule of thumb. When Boris Johnson says X, think the opposite of X. If he th if he says zero, think one. If he thinks if he says one, think zero. Okay, on and off, black and white. That's Boris Johnson. He's a compulsive liar. I, I, I struggle to uh, to see anything that he's telling the truth about in regard to Brexit. So these people believed Boris Johnson, but also their hatred of all things Irish allowed them to buy into his lies. Because they were convinced that he would put a border on the island of Ireland. They wanted to copper fasten the relationship between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. So if, if um, they believed that if there was a border put on the island of Ireland, that would basically destroy the Good Friday Agreement and it would lock Northern Ireland into the UK. But they bet on the wrong horse. They put their trust in the wrong person. They put their trust in, in Nigel, in Nigel, sorry, not Nigel Farage, Boris Johnson. And Boris Johnson is not to be trusted. Now, there was a risk probably that Boris Johnson would act completely irrational, but there was always the alarm bells ringing in the United States that said, Boris Johnson, if you do this, you can kiss goodbye to any trade deal. So when push came to shove, when it came to the Union or Brexit, Brexiteers, not the ones in Northern Ireland, but the ones on, in uh, Great Britain, chose Brexit every time. Nigel Farage, uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg, Boris Johnson ch chose Brexit over the Union. And Kate Hoey and the DUP are not happy about that. But that's what you get for putting your trust in Boris Johnson. And what has happened is that now that's not working. It's very, very difficult to make it uh, work satisfactorily. And the second aspect, of course, which is even more important, certainly for many people in Northern Ireland, is the fact that it's separating out more and more Northern Ireland from the rest of the United Kingdom. Well, it wasn't necessary to do that. It was not necessary, but you wanted that. You can't complain about that now. It's, you voted you put Brexit, there was no, it was completely unnecessary to do this. But you guys, through your hatred of the EU and your hatred of Ireland and all things Irish, you destroyed the union. Well done. You guys have done more damage to the union than Sinn Féin or the IRA or any Republican movement could have ever achieved in a hundred years. You put your trust in Boris Johnson. And Boris Johnson, I'm sorry to be laughing, but Boris Johnson is untrustworthy. And now he has destroyed the union. And he's about to destroy the union when it comes to uh, Scotland as well, including Sc keeping Scotland in the union. Boris Johnson is a fantastic campaigner <laughs> for Scottish independence. And uh, you people voted for this. I have no sympathy for the likes of Kate Hoey, although Kate Hoey is doing 
perfectly fine. She's not living under a bridge or anything. But these people are crying that, look, the union has been destroyed by the protocol, by the European Union, by everyone else. But they actually can turn around and look at reality in the face and say, yes, it's actually Brexit that has caused this. We actually had our union. Brexit came along and we voted for Brexit because we voted out of hatred for the EU and uh, the Republic of Ireland, the Irish. We don't like the Irish. We want to put a border, but their blind, their blind hatred was, uh, it, it blinded them from uh, reality. They couldn't see reality because of their, their hatred for both the EU and the Irish. And, you know, there's a little bit of satisfaction on my side because I, I have, look, I don't, I don't want, uh, a, a difficult situation in Northern Ireland. But these people don't deserve to be part of the union. These people live in another century. The DUP and these types of unionists and Brexiteers, they, they're not British. They don't, they don't believe in British values. They believe in a type of British value that maybe existed a hundred years ago. The DUP are not, you will not find anyone like the DUP on um, in, in Great Britain, with maybe the exception of some people in Scotland, but they don't represent Britishness. Ingerman, no one is speaking up for Northern Ireland because we're not in the European Union as such, but we're not really part of the United Kingdom in terms of uh, how the rules are made. So it's going to get worse before it can possibly get better, which is why most people now are saying the protocol has to be looked at. The protocol has to be looked at. The problem is not the protocol. The problem is that you're a third, that Great Britain is a third country. You can tweak the protocol all you want, but it's not going to change the status, the status quo. The situation is Great Britain is part of, sorry, is no longer part of the single market and the customs union. That's the problem. You can complain about the protocol. You can complain about Article 60. You can complain about the EU. You can complain about um, Leo Varadkar, you can complain about the Irish, you can complain all you want, but it's not going to change anything. One thing would change everything, and much, you know, in a way that would actually suit you, rejoin the single market and the customs union. But you won't even do that, because your hatred doesn't allow you to do that. Well, the, the, the rebuttal or, or, or counter argument from the government, from people like David Frost, from people like Michael Gove is, you know, it's the EU. It's the European Union uh, that is to blame for this sticky situation that we find ourselves in. And I suspect that, well, I wouldn't be about to ask, but, you know, how, to, to what extent do you think that that's a valid criticism? Well, of course, the European Union used Northern Ireland and used the whole question of the Belfast Agreement uh, to say, to make it very, very difficult for the United Kingdom. I mean, it was actually... Did, did the European Union cause Brexit? Did the European Union vote for Brexit? Did the, EU, did the European Union want the UK to leave? You can't blame the European Union for this. The, union, the European Union was a guarantor for, you know, for the Good Friday Agreement. They saw the Good Friday Agreement under threat. They did what was the honourable thing to do. They stood by the Good Friday Agreement. Now, you don't like the Good Friday Agreement, you would prefer it to be thrown in the bin. But you can't blame the European Union for standing by their, you know, I know like people like her would say, you know, well, breaking into international law is, is perfectly fine as long as it's done in specific circumstances and in a very limited way. But when the European Union said, look, we're going to stand by the Good Friday Agreement, I think that was the right approach said that one of their commissioners had said the price for Brexit is going to be Northern Ireland. And uh, the Irish government didn't help, I have to say, by cons consistently working with the EU to say that we couldn't possibly have a any kind of customs border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. They didn't say you couldn't. They said it would breach the Good Friday Agreement. You could do it. You could f physically build it. There's nothing stopping you from physically building it. But it would be in breach. It would be in breach of the spirit of the Good Friday Agreement. 
I mean, that is our frontier. It is a different country. And that's where the border should have been, perhaps over the border into the Republic of Ireland. Over the border? <laughs> what are you talking about? You have the border over the border. You know, you, you know, you do understand that there are two sides of a border, okay? There isn't one side of a border. <laughs> We've just seen, first of all, the EU were prepared to actually get rid of the protocol when it suited them over vaccinations. They were not going to get rid of the protocol. Now, I wish the journalist here on Sky News would actually call her out and say, no, no, actually, you know, that's a mistake. They were not getting rid of the protocol. They were considering invoking Article 16. They didn't actually invoke Article 16. They were, you know, they were, they took a step back which was the right thing to do. They, you know, if they had invoked Article 16, that would have been a mistake. They didn't do that. They considered invoking Article 16. Article 16 allows you to suspend part of the Northern Ireland Protocol in order to get over a problem. It says, we suspend this part of the protocol in order to find a solution to this problem. It's, a, it's actually a, a mechanism in order to stop the Northern Ireland Protocol from being suspended. So she's lying here, or she doesn't understand the protocol. Which do you think she's doing? First of all, the EU were prepared to actually get rid of the protocol when it suited them over vaccinations. And then now at the moment, the Irish government is stopping cars going from Northern Ireland to the Republic because of COVID. And They're stopping car. So th this is, so what she's trying to do is she's trying to say, look, you know, um, what's the difference with having a, bur a permanent uh, infrastructure on the border and having a few police officers from the Irish police with a little sign saying stop you know for a couple of hours a day or for even a week I don't know how long those uh, those checks are taking place but they're not permanent fixtures they're not permanent structures they have a little sign and then they bugger off to somewhere else She she's trying to inflate a, a, board, a, a check that's temporary during a pandemic with a permanent structure built on the border to check goods and people. And saying they can't travel. So, you know, the whole thing has been based on, on a, a half-truth and in fact a mistruth about the Belfast Agreement. And what we have to see now is it is just not acceptable for the United Kingdom to be kingdom to be divided like this and i'm sorry but you voted for it you won you get over it that's why the move towards getting the protocol changed will have to happen the european union is is playing hardball at the moment but i <laughs> but the Euro did the european union create this problem no did the european union say that there was going to be a problem yes what did brexit here say there will not be a problem now there's a problem so why is it the european union's fault and why should the European Union fix this problem? The European Union didn't want to create this problem. The European Union was against this. Brexiteers wanted this. And now they're complaining about it. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm not being very kind here. But if somebody tells you, if you do X, there's going to be this consequence. And your response is, no, there's not. And then later on you do X and you suffer the exact consequence that somebody told you about. You don't get you don't get to turn around and, and tell that person to fix the problem. I think as time goes on, even people within the Republic of Ireland will start to say this is just not working. We cannot allow this to continue. And uh, I hope that many conservative members of parliament who voted for this protocol, not really understanding, I think, the repercussions and not really understanding the threat that it has overall to the future of the union of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And that <laughs> I'm sorry, but first of all, she, in a way she's correct. The conservative members of the Conservative Party voted for the withdrawal agreement, um, which of course included the protocol, and they didn't know what they were voting for. Yes, that's true. But does anyone truly believe that they care? They don't care. They don't care about Northern Ireland. I'm sorry, Kate. The sooner you understand that, the better. Boris Johnson doesn't care about the people of Northern Ireland. Boris Johnson doesn't care about borders. He doesn't care about... All he cares about is looking cool. He, he cares about having a free trade agreement with the United States. 
And when it came to having a free trade agreement with the United States or maintaining Northern Ireland in the Union, which do you think won out? Now, you can blame the Irish government, you can blame the European Union, you can blame uh, anyone else for that. But Boris Johnson made a decision. He decided, I want to have a free trade agreement with the United States or I can maintain the union. And we see the result of that. Now, Kate wants to scrap the protocol, but not replace it with anything, unless she wants to just scrap it and have a hard border on the island of Ireland. And then we're going to see very serious problems. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons you ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?